So what did you want me to say? The Travis Scott Jordan 1 is a fantastically crafted and well put together sneaker. There's nothing wrong with the quality control. The craftsmanship is outstanding. And if you're in the market to purchase them on the secondary market, it is well worth the money. Yo, what is good everybody and thank you so, so much for stopping by the channel once again from us over here at Locust and Wild Honey. So if you caught my upload earlier this week, then you're probably already caught up with how we got to making this video today. But with that being said, if you have yet to, be sure to hit the link in the description to get a little bit more context. But I essentially took four pairs of Travis Scott Jordan 1s and compared them to each other to see if the rumors were true about Nike's quality control issues. And now with what we seemingly know about the quality control issues on the Travis Scott Jordan 1, is it panic time? I mean, is it legitimately time to worry with the quality control issues on Nike's part and the fact that fakes are getting really, really stinking good? Is it actually time for us to start being concerned with fake pairs being synonymous with legit? with fake pairs passing as legit? And if so, how's a consumer supposed to stay motivated to continue to wear legit sneakers? Is the sneaker market still safe from China's best replicas? Or is this hype beast bubble just about to burst? At this point, I honestly don't have an answer for that. Anyways, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Now there's a very, very good chance you've seen this screenshot already as it's been floating all over their internet, Reddit, Instagram, YouTube. It's been pretty much everywhere. One thing I did want to denote is that I have no idea if this thing is real or if it's manufactured or photoshopped. I'm not sure, but all I know is it's gone a ton of traction. So I figured it was worth mentioning in this video. So as you guys may know, StockX is an awesome streetwear and sneaker selling platform. Their service offers quite a lot, but for today's video, we're just gonna be harping on the legit checking aspect. They essentially act as a middleman where the seller sends it to them and they send it to the buyer. And in between time, they legit check the shoes for you. There's definitely a ton of risk involved because they're essentially saying they're so professional that they can for sure verify that sneakers are real or fake. And then a screenshot like this comes along, which is just so bad for PR. Again, I have no idea if it's real or if it's fake, but if it is real, my goodness, does this put a huge corkscrew not only into StockX's brand, but other competing rivals brand like Go and stuff like that, and just a secondary market in general. This picture alleges that this person sent over a hundred pairs of fakes and 88% went through, which is to say this person came up a hundred thousand dollars if i'm honest with you i just find this story to be a little bit too hard to believe comment down below if you guys know anything additionally but i mean if this is real my goodness this is crazy but with that being said i do have a situation that is a bit more anecdotal from sb collector this is a screen grab from his instagram and i know he's an og sneakerhead i know he's been in the game for a long time much longer than myself and i personally just feel like he has the credibility to not have any ulterior motives or anything like that i think he actually did buy the shoes and may have gotten fakes guys whether or not that first hundred thousand dollar screenshot is real this one i just feel like this one has a bit more credence and even if it's just this one situation this one anecdotal situation it's one too many we're talking a thousand dollars this man just dropped on some shoes that are fake that are fugaga anyways he proceeded to share with us a screenshot of what StockX said back and their defense was built upon and predicated on wait for it nike's quality control the message pretty much says the shoes definitely check out and keep in mind bear in mind that Nike mass produces these shoes, so expect variances. Which is to say, because so many were made, don't expect the best quality control. I mean, keep in mind, if there was like one variable factor on the shoes, I feel like that's livable, that's, that's totally fine. But when you take into account that there could potentially be three, four, five different aspects of the sneaker that varies from shoe to shoe, that can definitely put a wrench into this authentication process. Anyways, as promised, I did want to share with you guys some of those pictures and B-roll and some of the notes that I took based on the fake compared to the real shoes and kind of talk about what the fakes did well 
and what they didn't do so well. Just before we get started, I did wanna let you guys know that this is by no means an all-inclusive one-to-one -one review. I really only had about 20 minutes to spend with these sneakers side by side. So I'm pretty much sharing you guys my opinions on some of the most important constituent aspects of what makes these shoes, these shoes. The reason why I couldn't spend more time with these shoes because they weren't my shoes, nor were they the store shoes, but they're actually the shoes of a 16 year old customer who actually paid $800, was hoping to get a side swap only to find out his shoes were fakes. I don't blame this kid whatsoever because these fakes were really, really good. It was a really sad story. But with all that to say, let's go ahead and jump into the first comparison. The tumble leather on the real pairs weren't necessarily always consistent, but all I can say is there was a difference between the real pairs and the fake pairs in that for the fake pair, the tumble just wasn't quite as tumbled as a real pair. Could this tumble leather pass as an authentic shoe? Honestly, as much as I hate to say this, guys, I have to say yes. Now, the reason being is that if you don't have both pairs hand in hand, like side by side, there's no possible way I could have been able to tell the difference. Next thing I wanna talk about was the size of the swoosh as well as its placement on the shoe. Due to the fact that there was a bit of variance with regard to the authentic pairs, I will have to say that the fake pair got this dead on. The quality of leather of the swoosh was A1, the size was A1, and due to the fact that that swoosh was almost like everywhere on the real pairs, on the four pairs that we did compare in the last video, who's to say, regardless of where the fake company put the swoosh, who's to say that they got it wrong because there's no specific identifiable way to say this is exactly where it goes. Actually, ironically enough, I looked up pictures for fake pairs of Travis Scott ones and you'd be surprised. It's almost as if the Chinese pairs are more consistent with where they put the swoosh and the size of the swoosh than the Nike factories. So back to the question, is the size of the swoosh and its placement passable? I have to say yes again. The next topic I wanted to talk about was the Travis Scott logos, both the one on the back of the heel, as well as on the medial portion of the sneaker that's in 3M. But I will start out with is this, if you don't have both shoes side by side and at eye level, there's no way you're gonna tell. I mean, there is a little bit of color differentiation with regard to the brown suede, and it's very little. It's, it's a very subtle hue of a difference. But with that said, if you have both hand in hand, and you're able to you know, see a fake one and a real one, and you're able to just stare at them for a second, I will have to say you would be able to tell a difference just strictly based on the color alone. The suede as well is a bit more hairy on the authentic pair. Now in regard to the Cactus Jack script, on the medial portion of the shoe. It's a bit more white on the fake pair than on the real pair. So I'm not even 100% sure that it is 3M. I didn't get to check it because obviously I didn't spend that much time with the shoe, but yeah, that's another way you're able to tell. So is the shoe passable? Yes, only on foot. If you have them side by side in hand, then I would have to say probably not. Now, in regard to the toe box, like I said earlier, the suede is slightly different of a brown hue. But with that to say, on the toe box, a tumble leather on there, both pairs, exactly the same. Like I could not tell a difference, exactly the same. So could that part pass? Absolutely. Those are pretty much all the big aspects of the shoe that I did wanna talk about. Keep in mind guys, that these might not even be the best fakes out there. These are just a random pair of fakes that came into the store simultaneously while I was there. If there's already potentially a fake pair on the market, and my opinion on these was that, holy smokes, they're actually pretty good. Who's to say that the best fakes out there can't pass as legit? Which ultimately leads us back to the original question. Should we legitimately be concerned with the fake sneaker market? Is this hype beast bubble and the sneaker market in jeopardy due to the fact that quality control isn't exactly the best, right? Hold on one second, guys, sorry. 